We are live. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, here we are once again at the very lovely and today a very sunny corner of Glenwood and Lunt. We are in the Heartland Cafe up here on the stage where every Saturday morning we bring you another edition of the Live from the Heartland show. I'm Michael James and I'm hosting this morning's edition. Katie is somewhere, but she, I know she's on her way to Dubuque, Iowa to do some work on, for democracy and getting out the vote. So Katie, wherever you are, I hope you're doing well. Uh, we have a really interesting lineup this morning. We have uh, we had two guests scheduled. We had Robert Katzman, who has the Magazine Museum up in Skokie, uh, a very interesting guy, and he's going to be up in a little while. And we're going to talk about periodicals and the press and uh, getting a hold of old and valued and trusted periodicals. Uh, we're going to then have Utah and the High Dukes, which is a pretty high energy. Band that does everything from Balkan gypsy grooves to Danish songs, exotic Greek blues, etc. They'll be playing at the end of the show and uh, rush right on over if you want to get the vibe. And we are honored to have, uh, at the last minute, we got notice that the the workers at Sinsada plant out there in Freeport, Illinois, um, who are being outsourced by Bain Capital, are headed to Tampa, Florida to, to greet the hurricane and the GOP, the Grand Old Party Republican Party Convention, because Mitt Romney will not come to them, so they are going to him. So good morning to you workers from Sensada. Good morning. Good morning. And how are you today? Good. Fine. And you're getting on a plane in a little while and you're headed to Tampa, Florida. Yep. Have you been there before? No. No. Well, it's nice down there. There's a great bookstore uh, called Inkwood Books, and it's a former customer and good friend of ours. Uh, Leslie, if you're listening, we're pushing your place. Uh, so everyone who's down there in Tampa, check out Inkwood Books. Okay, so I've been hearing about the Sensato workers uh, from, from the group uh, called Stand Up Chicago, um, and they were arranging a meeting with Jan Chikowski and you, and we were going to have it here, but Jan was out of town. And then I got uh, information yesterday that you were uh, on your way to Tampa, uh, so here you are this morning, and we're going to have a, get a little information. Uh, let me find out who I'm talking to here. I know I've got Tom over to my left. I've got Cheryl sitting over there, but they've stuck Bonnie on my right and Joni on my left. Joanne. Joanne. Mm -hmm. Okay, Joanne and Bonnie, you started off. Tell us a little bit about what uh, the Sensata plant is, what you make, and what is your situation today? Um... The Sensata plant makes automotive parts for Chrysler and GM. Um, we found out a year and a half ago that we were going to be outsourced to China. So basically we've been training our Chinese replacements and uh, just waiting for the day that they tell us to stay home, which for us is coming right around the 1st of November. And you've got 170 workers there? Correct. And uh, they're outsourcing the whole plant, so they're going to close the plant? Correct. And it's going to China, and how many workers have they brought in from China to be trained? And uh, I guess one of, to one of you share with me what that's like, training the people who are taking your jobs. Well, I think it was like uh, 40 or 50 total. And, I mean, the people aren't to blame. It's, it's the head of the corporation. Um, but it, there's a language barrier. I mean, it's very difficult to train them. Yeah, I, I had to spell a lot of things because uh -huh. they just didn't understand what I was saying. And so they didn't bring in a, any, any translators in? We had a female interpreter, but most of the employees we trained were male, and mm -hmm. they don't particularly care to take direction from a female. Not big on women's liberation yet? In no. The, in the great socialist mothership over there? Correct. <laughs> uh, well, how did you get the news that... Uh, that the Sensata plant was going to uh, outsource these jobs, and what did you all do when you found out? We got the news, well, we actually were a part of Honeywell, and they sold the business to um, Sensata, and that was like January, the end of January 2011, and our first meeting was like the following Monday, 
and they basically said welcome to Sensata and within the next year and a half to two years we are outsourcing all these jobs to China. And you could have probably heard a pin drop in the room and everybody was just, you kind of had speculation but you weren't positive. So it was a shock. Well I asked earlier if you had a union and you told me uh, that you don't have a union. Uh, was there ever uh, any, any question of having a union? Was there people who said we should get a union or was it just that you felt like you were being treated well enough to not have to face that possible, you know, the circumstances that would really require that a union take a stance with you? Well, I think um, there were several people that did try to start a union, but there wasn't um, a lot of back people backing them, so they kind of just backed away from that whole idea. Yeah, I would imagine that that's something that happens a lot of places, that people are have, they're in some kind of equilibrium or some kind of balance with their workplace, and they think, well, we better not speak up or we better not uh, go for a union because, uh, you know, obviously certain, uh, certain corporate operations uh, don't look fondly on unions, and as we know, there's been a great effort in recent years to, to break unions. Um, and uh, so what are your, re what are your, what, what's, what can you do now? Uh, you know, I mean, how, what, what uh, methods of uh, communication or methods of questioning or challenging have you been able to marshal? I know you've had some good press and you've got support from a number of people, but what are the workers doing now to try to change this situation? Um, we've delivered a lot of petitions. Uh, we've called out to Mitt Romney to, to come to Freeport to help save our jobs. Um, we're going to Tampa because we can't get to him, so or he isn't coming to us, so we're going to him. Um, he's got a room already for you to have a meeting with him. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he's not. Look, I think he kind of knows now where Freeport, Illinois is. <laughs> now, my understanding is that Bain Capital has their Chicago headquarters in Evanston, and have uh, <clears throat> Sensato workers been up to the Evanston office? We were actually there on Tuesday, and we uh, delivered 35,000 signatures on a petition, but they actually locked the doors on us. They wouldn't let us in the building. 35,000 people signed this petition. Now, are they mostly from Illinois, or they're they from around the country? They're from all over the country, just support for our cause. And what's the date when they're going to actually close it down and uh, send the, you off? The drop-dead date is the end of January of 2013. They, their lease runs out. What's the morale of the workers right now? I mean, what kind of, I mean, it would, are people uh, eagerly doing their job on a daily basis? Is there people slowing down? Is there a lot of grumbling? Is there a lot of dispiritedness? Well, I think now that it's getting towards the end, there's a lot of people that just really don't care. They're just trying to make it to the end to get their severance packages. I think um, a lot of people don't care about their quality. A lot of the, you know, our support doesn't care about the quality. They're, they're just waiting for it to get over. Uh, so what's that mean? It means unemployment? Is there, are there any other jobs opening up in your area? Uh, not the quality of pay that we're used to. Um, at 52, I'm going to be competing with people that are, like, in their early 20s, um, and I'm not looking forward to that. Have you had any support from uh, the state, from, uh, from the governor, anything going on? Any, uh, I know you've had good press and you've had a number of progressive people like Stand Up Chicago bringing this issue to the forefront, but uh, anything else that people should know about? I'm always looking for who are the good guys, in a situ guys and girls in a situation. We've had the city council and the mayor, and the governor has come and backed us in Freeport as well. So yes, there are officials that are backing us, um, senators, Sherry Busto. Uh, there's a lot of them that are coming to step forward. Now who's forward. Sherry Busto? She's actually running for um, the Senate against Bobby Schilling in our Congress, um, against Bobby Schilling in our area. And who, Bobby Schilling, he's a Republican? Yes. And she's a Democrat? Yes. Well, so I can't take sides, supposedly, no. but who we're rooting for. 
<laughs> well, if they're going to bring anybody that's going to bring us jobs right now is who yeah. we're working for. And we just want to get uh, Mitt Romney to step up and do what's right for the American people. So you went to Bain Capital's office and they basically locked the door on you when you delivered 35,000 signatures. Yes, they did. And now we're headed off to Tampa, Florida. When you get to Tampa, what are your plans? Our plan is to try to continue to get our message out and rally with other people that are fighting for the same purpose of good American paying jobs and stop outsourcing to the foreign countries. And Bain Capital and Mitt Romney are still making profits from us. And we're trying to bring that to the forefront and make that an issue. Um, in the town, how big a town is Freeport? The town of Freeport is 27,000. and. Um, Honeywell That's Sensata is actually not just the town of Freeport, it's Northwest Illinois because we have a lot of people that come from southern Wisconsin and northern Illinois to Freeport to work. And at one time we had three large manufacturing facilities there and right now we have, the one is decreased to just about nothing and the, the one that we're in, the other part of aerospace is still Honeywell, that has still got a few people left to it. Uh, have there been picket lines or demonstrations in town? Yes, um, we've had rallies um, that we've held since we've started this operation. And in the short time that we've done this, we've accomplished quite a bit. Uh, if you just tuned in, you're listening to Live from the Heartland Show. I'm Michael James. I'm here with uh, representatives of the Sensata Workforce. It's a uh, automobile parts manufacturer. It used to be connected to Honeywell out there in Freeport, Illinois, just to the east of Galena and um, they have uh, been notified that their jobs are being outsourced to China and they are actually being asked to train Chinese workers. Uh, they are on their way to Tampa, Florida because Mitt Romney and Bain Capital will not talk to them and they're taking their fight to the doors of the Republican Convention. Uh, there's one more member of the group here that, uh, named Tom. Uh, that would be Tom Galrup. And Tom, uh, what do you have to add to this conversation? Well, I just want people to understand that um, we're not just sitting on a line somewhere snapping the other parts. These are very high, highly technical, you know, very expensive parts to make with expensive equipment. And if, you, if, your, car stop, if your car has one of these parts on it and the part fails, your car is going to stop right there. It's not just something for looks or anything like that. And uh, yeah, the Romney campaign has had uh, continually said, well, we, we're not aware of the situation. Well, they're aware of it now and we're gonna make sure that we make them more aware of it. And how long have you all been working in this plant? I mean, it seems like, uh, like in many situations where uh, the, the relationship between workers and owners of, of corporations, companies goes astray, that uh, you have people who really devoted a lot of their lives to, uh, to the job uh, and have worked faithfully uh, to trying to produce goods that other people in this country and around the world need. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, how long each of you have worked in this uh, in this plant. I've been there 33 years. I've been there 33 years and I never thought at this point in my life that I would be looking for a new career as well as we're not trying to get rich, we're just trying to get by and make a living. What's the, go ahead. Yeah, I want to know how many years you've been I, Well, I worked there six years, but I'm a single mother with two girls. I have a junior in high school. I have a seventh grader, so I'm worried about how I'm going to support my family. And I've worked there for 23 years. Well, that's a long haul for everybody. I know I've been here 36 years at the Heartland. It seems like 100. <laughs> and it also seems just like yesterday that it got started. Um, what kind of contingency plans do you have, uh, just individually or collectively? Anything? Well, when the last day of the doors and shut and we're out the door, I guess we'll see what we happens. But, you know, we've all been working. We, it's going to change our lives completely. We're going to try. Some of us go back to school. Some find a job. But it's going to be devastating to figure out how we're going to make the ends, the bills meet on a monthly basis. And I, I mean, I, Joanne and I both are single parents, and to try to figure out how we're going to get by, my daughter happens to be in college, so that's even a, one uh, more expense there. 
Well, I would, uh, I would imagine this would cast a pale of uh, some kind of sorrow around the whole community out there. Uh, do you feel like you're getting support from your neighbors? Oh, most definitely. I think the entire town of Freeport, for the mass majority, are behind us 100%. You know, we had a situation a couple years ago here, which uh, President Obama did address, where we had a plant in Chicago that made windows. And, uh, you know, all of a sudden their doors got closed, and they actually had a sort of a sit-in, you know, they were inside, and they locked the company out. Um, you had mentioned earlier that uh, the lease was going to be up on this building in January, so, you know, time for when you're going to, uh, the jobs are completely outsourced and everything closes down. What happens to that plant? Who owns the actual building? Honeywell still owns the actual building, and that's why they only leased it for the two-year period to Sensata for the automotive to get moved out. Um, so it'll be up for sale because they will be moving the little bit that they do have in that plant out to another facility or outsourcing it as well. How in your community, out in Freeport, Illinois, Northwest Illinois, up into the Southwest Wisconsin, um, how are people taking to this whole notion of Bain Capital outsourcing jobs? We, you know, I watch uh, the most progressive news I can find on TV. Uh, I do go on the internet and get more, but I will watch MSNBC, whether it be Rachel Maddow or any of the other shows on that, uh, 